on Wednesday night, a late scratch to UFC Vegas 72 headline by Song Yudong, who's taking on Ricky Simone. And when we're talking about a fellow Northwestern American, not Ricky Simone, we're talking Journey Newsom, originally do one Brian Kelleher. Out is Kelleher. And in steps, I'm Freeze McGee. I'm talking about the maniac, Marcus McGee. And I don't know if he likes jam bands. Uh, but what I do know is that you might have heard of him. And so, for those who are kind of uninitiated out there, for some of the fight fans that might not recognize the man on the right-hand side of our screen that's not wearing a hat, the man with the hair, I'm talking about Marcus McGee. You might know him from the Instagrams. You might know him as Sean O'Malley's training partner. Exactly. But when I look at a guy like Marcus McGee, who's been featured heavily with Kyler Phillips, with a guy like Mario Bautista, and with Sugar Sean O'Malley, McGee's kind of been able to mold out his own fighting and if you've seen him he's competed with a few different organizations whether it's rough MMA he main evented his pro debut in 2020 with rough Valentine's Day Massacre was the name of the show. He main evented that one. Ruff had a couple of road to one, and that's one championship cards. After that, he got a couple of wins there. Those are kind of co-promoted, spearheaded a little bit by Rich Franklin. And then if you look at it, LFA, he also fought with Cajuns versus Cowboys, or Cowboys versus Cajuns. We talked about that promotion recently, where Aaron Phillips had competed with them, and that was his step into the UFC, and a couple of bouts with the LFA. But when you look at a guy like Marcus McGee, Obviously, he's going to have a height advantage. He's going to have a, a reach advantage using those metrics that we've seen from the LFA. Now, it should be noted that this is a catchweight bout of 140 pounds because McGee is in on Wednesday night getting set for the fight that's on Saturday. But, Matt, when we look at this fight, I mean, where McGee has struggled, and just in that one loss to Nascimento, a.k.a. Militia. That's what they called him over there. And he had like the metal militia tattoo on his back. And you know what? For that, for militia, I thought, why not break out the dirty Craig jersey? Let's just get crazy with the names on our backs, Matt, for the Craig Kimbrell shout out. But when you look at a guy like Marcus McGee, Matt, does he fight like Brian Kelleher? Not at no, all. No. Not at all. I like how he moves forward with his combinations. I will say that. He's not a guy like Kelleher who's going to use the combinations as much to set up his wrestling. But when he moves forward, when he's really able to go downhill with his shots, look, put it this way. If Journey Newsom finds his back up against the cage, this is going to be a really difficult fight for him because McGee is an interesting fighter. He can fight really well from the southpaw stance. He will switch stances as he is throwing so combinations moving forward. And that's a really nice thing to see. And it does show that he does have not only a high level of training partner, but that's the thing that I do like about McGee. I was a little worried when I initially saw oh, 32 years old, almost 33, coming into the UFC. I think this is a great matchup for him, though, coming into, because what have we said all week long about Journey Newsom in his original matchup against Brian Kelleher? The skills are there, but it's just sort of a matter for him putting it all together to really be able to sell us on it. If he's not really able to put it all together, Marcus McGee's the type of guy who can hurt him with a big shot, rock him, and then really hurt him with some of those big combinations afterwards. I just like the matchmaking. I think this is a good fight for McGee to have in his debut. Yeah, Journey Newsom, I mean, his last win was over Fernie Garcia, no boxer and in that fight it was kind of a stalemate on the outside Newsom forced some of the wrestling exchanges got a few takedowns but not for a lot of ground control time and it was kind of a nothing burger of a fight it was a good win for Newsom. it's a legit win on his record and so far in the UFC one and three with the no contest the no contest tested positive for the sticky icky he knocked out a tall southpaw striker similar to Marcus McGee in Domingo Polardi Polardi threw the left hand at the same time that Newsom came over the top with the right and it dropped Polardi like a sack of potatoes and you had Newsom going out and getting the win but when I look at a guy like McGee I went down through and I watched every single fight there's seven pro fights so far from the rough days They're pretty all, darn exciting I must all the say. way up to the LFA and I mean I can break them all down in unison but what I did have in my notes so when he's fighting from Southpaw. He's throwing hooks. He's working his boxing to the body, to the head. And he's, if I may, he does like to lead with the left straight and not always set up with the jab. I kind of like that. He, it just no, mixes it up for his He opponent. doesn't throw a jab. He doesn't throw That's a jab That's why I mean he'll throw the left straight yeah. instead of the jab. He, I like yeah, that. Yeah, Marcus McGee doesn't throw a jab whatsoever. He throws the left straight. He throws hooks from both uh, from both hands. And then he also, what I had in here is, when he's from Southpaw, he throws a roundhouse to the body. When he switches over to Orthodox, it's only to land two strikes. It's leg kicks and teep kicks up the middle, and that's it from the orthodox stance. He rarely will throw his hands from orthodox. He'll then switch back over to so He will step, though, as he's moving forward. That's why it does kind of look like the, that. The, when he's on the defensive for McGee, the other way, if he's trying to close distance, he'll throw a flying knee to close distance and drop his hands. 
He'll also throw kicks, drop his hands, and throw naked kicks where he's liable to getting taken down from either double leg or single leg positions. And I had that in my notes against Nascimento. He goes and throws a kick, and then he's completely naked. Nascimento runs the pipe all the way across the cage, gets a takedown, and then he kind of gives up on it. He, like, stacks guard, gives up. They both get back up. But it is McGee after a lot of hand fighting, after a lot of kind of cross faces. It was almost like a neck crank. They considered it a rear naked choke, but that's his one loss. Apart from that, though, in certain fights, it was, what, his last fight that he had over with the LFA, and then it was his first fight. He fought with his hands really, really low to the ground, where striking defense was either backing up with his hands down into, to his left, or just backing straight up with his hands down. A spot where a Taekwondo fighter like Journey Newsom, who has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, could kind of capitalize in some of these circumstances. But this is what I don't like about Newsom's grappling. He might have the black belt. He, is he a heavy fighter in that top position? Not really, because he has all the skills. It's just a matter of putting them together. Like, I can't disagree with anything you said, but he has good wrestling. He has the black belt in his background, but we rarely see him go out there and really implement those two parts of his game together. I agree. For him to have success, I will expect him to use some of those single shots on the outside, disguise those overhands in with his takedowns, and try to use some of his grappling. The thing is, it's really hard for me to think, oh wow, he's just going to become this thing that he hasn't yet really be able to show no, and, some of the, all of his parts. And Newsom showed the wrestling and the grappling in the back pocket, in the UFC, as well as, you know, in his rise up to the UFC. Obviously, you're going to look at his last fight where he got completely wrestled. <laughs> against Sergey Morozov, but when you have a look at a matchup like this, Matt, for McGee, total level of competition out of all of the wins combined is 25 and 20, and the one loss was to a 6-1 and one fighter who would then go on to fight for, just recently, just back in March, fought for the Bantamweight Championship over at the LFA. He didn't win, but he is a good fighter. Yeah, Nascimento is a good fighter, so when we have a look at the odds in the matchup, Matt, Newsom is almost a 2-1 to one favorite. He opened up as a giant favorite. He's about a 2-1 to one right now. If you have a look at McGee, open plus 315 he's a plus 150 underdog right now we threw this one out there on our instagram at fight night picks in the poll and out of the poll vote matt 52 percent with journey newson to get Close. the win 48 wow. percent with marcus mcgee so again with mcgee low level competition as a pro very low level competition the guys that he was able to beat didn't go on to do a whole heck of a lot and out of the one loss a good fighter for journey newson i mean the level of competition has been all over the place That's and going right. from fighting brian kelleher who's had 15 fights in the UFC. He's had fight of the nights, performance Top bonuses. Leather boot. Exactly. Fought John Lineker at one point. To then going on to fighting Marcus McGee, it's a big reset for, for a guy like Journey. And Houston. that's why I kind of have to bring up my own point that I said at the start of the week about Julian Arosa and Fernando Padilla. It's, hey, you're making your debut. You have a lot of skills. You're probably going to be good in the future. I just think this is a difficult matchup for your debut. Now, I do think Padilla is on a much different level than a guy like McGee, or McGee sorry, but I, I see this in kind of a similar way. McGee could have success, and it's rare that I'll say this. I can see him winning by decision, which is weird for the Kai coming in, making his debut to win by decision. Just because his activity could stifle some of the outside movement from Newsom. Newsom is a guy who does need a lot of those overhand strikes to land for him to really have success from the outside. And if he's able to do that, then it really does help his whole game open up. So I will pick Newsom ever so slightly, but I could see McGee hitting him with a big shot, getting his respect on the feet, and then maybe starting to build up uh, with some of his combinations. Because I do think the output heavily favors McGee. I think McGee absolutely, like, blows Newsom out of the water in this fight. I, I don't think this fight's even close, and I know McGee hasn't been tested against anybody near UFC level. I, I was very hesitant when I looked at the tape, or before I looked at the tape, when I looked at the record, when I looked at what people were saying like out there on our YouTube community tab, I thought, geez, I don't know about this. But going back and watching the tape, McGee rarely takes a step backwards, and McGee's the one that initiates the offense, whereas Journey Newsom is incredibly low volume if he gets his wrestling and his grappling going black belt versus blue belt in jiu-jitsu it could be a different game in different waters but i think with mcgee pressuring the action landing that low kick if we see noose and force to switch his stance throw the game plan around even more i know it's a tough ask he's on taking him down on a, a lot of this a wednesday before a saturday but we're split on the pick here not going with journey Newson. i'm going with uh, the maniac, Marcus McGee. I mean, Tim Sylvia is doing power slop. Or, or, he is. Or not power slop, but slop fighting. He's not on the power slop banner. I've got a McGee. No E on the Maniac. Uh, big time fight. I really want to hear from folks on this one. Again, it was on the YouTube community tab. It was out there on our Instagram. If there's any more changes on this fight card, you can find the videos here, the individual videos. Make sure you toss a like and a sub before we go live on Saturday, two hours before the prelims for question mark kicks. You're going to want to keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.